NASCAR fans love things they can't have. They love things they used to have and now are gone. But one thing that honestly only about a small percentage of fans really miss is the Kentucky Speedway. The Kentucky Speedway being a mile and a half track in Sparta, Kentucky. Wow, shocker there. And it was a track that had a very tumultuous run in the NASCAR Cup Series. While it was in the Bush Series and Truck Series, it brought in some pretty big crowds for the time, and it seemed like a surefire bet that one day Bruton Smith would have his Diamond of Kentucky in the Cup Series schedule. And coming into 2011, that dream would come true. Now, a lot of people had a lot of hype for this track. It was the first time in a long time that a new track was added to the NASCAR Cup Series schedule, and it wasn't a track that was taking one away from a beloved track either. So there was reason to be excited for this kind of change. Plus, it was in an area that many had assumed would be big for NASCAR, and we'd learn for all the wrong reasons why it was a good market for NASCAR, or at least how it was. Let's look at that 2011 race. Now, I have a whole video on this ordeal, but overall, the race was mediocre at best. It was nothing special. Kyle Busch dominated the night, and with that, you had basically a 5 out of 10 race to start out its tenure. But there was a bit of an issue outside the track. And when I say a bit of an issue, I say miles upon miles of a traffic jam. One of the biggest that I think anyone has ever seen when it comes to a sporting event. Because both the area and the track were woefully unprepared for the amount of people that would come. You see, the Kentucky Speedway would hold over 115,000 fans. To put that in perspective, that was about the same amount that were showing up to the Daytona Summer Race at the time. And it was, say, about a little under what Bristol currently holds. But unlike those tracks, this one did not have the pedigree of that, and it showed. There was miles upon miles of traffic backed up. It was to the point that thousands couldn't even see the track by the end of the race and decided, screw it, and just turned around and went home. To this day, it was one of the biggest black eyes the sport has ever seen, as beforehand, Bruton Smith would be famously shown to have said that it would be bigger than Daytona on NASCAR race day right before. It was bigger, all right, a bigger controversy. Now, we talked about the racing a little bit before, and I think that's the second reason why this track fell. The Kentucky Speedway generally had some pretty boring racing overall. Generally, the track had long, drawn-out runs, and there wasn't too much passing once those dominant cars got out front. You saw this especially in 2012, the second year of the event, as well as the first year, and you'd see it throughout even if there was strategy. This only got worse with the reconfiguration and then the 550 package for the most part. We'll talk about what was good when it came to that a little later. But overall, the racing was nothing special, so fans quickly fell away from supporting the track. The third big reason why this track isn't around anymore, I think, is because of the visibility of it. And not the sight lines or anything like that, but how many were watching and the money that went into it. You see, this track had pretty bad viewership. Attendance was good at first, but then fell as well. And while it's hard to look at the attendance past about 2013 because official numbers didn't come out anymore, it is pretty evident that it went down based on estimates. The first race at the track had an estimated 107,000 people buy tickets for it with almost 5 million viewers. Just a tick off what TNT was getting at the time, but nothing too major. But in the time that TNT ran with this event through 2014, it would lose an astonishing 1.4 million viewers, and a 22% drop came just year over year in 2012. It went from about 5 million viewers to about 3.6 in 2014. And overall, the attendance was okay, but after that 2014 season, it just sort of plateaued off terribly. By the time 2019 rolled around, the last race with fans at the track, only about 30,000 were in the grandstands, which was off from 40,000 the year before and 60,000 in 2017. 
it was pretty clear that this track was not a draw for anyone anymore, as there were better tracks in the surrounding area, which we'll talk about in a bit, that would bring people's eyes and attention away. Viewership-wise, it fell all the way to 2019's 2.075 million viewers on NBCSN, which was down from 3.2 million in 2015, the first year of it being on the network. And when you look at it compared to other TNT and NBCSN races, well, it wasn't good. Almost every race from 2012 to about 2019 was down, say, 15 to 25% from what the network normally did that year with NASCAR races, with the only bright spots being, well, 2016 being 8% over in viewership for an NBCSN race and 2018 being up by 1%. Those races had 3.2 million in 2016 and 2.2 million in 2018. Still not a good trend overall for the track, but it had at least a little flashpoints. The last year on FS1 with COVID in 2020 had about 2.6 million, which was up compared to most FS1 races. But you have to also remember that a lot of those races were midweek races due to the COVID pandemic. And then money-wise, there's a big reason this race didn't have visibility and probably isn't missed in the garage area because of the small purse money. Most small purses on the NASCAR schedule are attributed to tracks that are smaller, like Phoenix, maybe the Martinsville race in Richmond per se, as well as a track like Pocono that is more independently run. This race every year had as followed while the purse is readily available, these rankings on the schedule out of 36 races. 2011, 31st. 2012, 31st, 2013, 31st, 2014, 31st, and in 2015, the last year that these purses are readily available to find, it had a staggering 31st place on the NASCAR schedule out of 36 races. Compare that to other tracks that have left, say like Chicagoland, and Chicagoland's purse was generally about a million dollars more than the Kentucky Speedway. So business-wise, it didn't make sense to keep coming to the event, especially coming up soon, when it looks like a lot of that purse money may be coming more from attendance, which, like we talked about before, was drastically plummeting. Now, I briefly mentioned location earlier, and that is the fourth reason why this race is no longer a race on the NASCAR schedule. It seemed like a good one, as it was near Cincinnati, Ohio. Hell, last month I went to Cincinnati and I passed this track on the way there. But there was a bit of a miscalculation here. This location was close to plenty of other major tracks. Six with today's schedule and one other that is off the schedule. There is Bristol and Nashville Super Speedway. Both are 241 miles from the track within a driving distance. The fairgrounds, 235 miles away. Chicago, 317, and Gateway, 316. And Indianapolis, which while having bad attendance percentage-wise, still brought in pretty good crowds at 138 miles away. And just under 300 miles away was the Chicago Land Speedway at the time. There were plenty of other tracks that had bigger draws that were nearby it, and that ultimately hurt it with the attendance. So, then what else do you have to give a reason why? Because attendance isn't only the reason why this track is gone now. They could have just brought it back when the time was right. The fifth and final reason is that NASCAR as a culture has passed it by. SMI is going after other bigger markets. The one that I look at is Coda, which goes after Austin, Texas. And NASCAR overall is going after everything but mile and a half tracks nowadays, as they have the least amount of mile and a halfs in the schedule in at least 20 years. Could it come back? Yes, it could probably come back one day. Locals seem to want it back, and it has seemed to be kept up on, but it is a very small amount of people that want it compared to tracks like the Nashville Fairgrounds, Rockingham, and even Chicagoland. It had two great finishes to end it off, which is really what's keeping it going, I think, in a lot of fans' eyes. In 2019, you had the Bush Brother battle, and in 2020, you had Cole Custer's surprise win that, I'll be honest, nobody saw coming. But other than that, what's the most famous thing people remember from this track? Bad traffic and a truck on fire. And that's the big issue with Kentucky. It really had no identity, at least with the broader NASCAR fan base. And because of that, it's been left by the wayside. But with that, I'm going to pass this on to you. What do you think of the Kentucky Speedway? Do you want it back? Do you not? Are you glad it's gone? What do you think? 
let me know down in the comments below. And while you're at it, leave a like on this video, share this video, and subscribe to this channel for more great NASCAR content. Thank you so much to all my channel members for your continued support, and until next time, have a good one.